Okay, so real quick, I want to do another video on Boolean Algebra. This one is going to be an extension of the previous one, and it's really going to be diving into the idea of functional completeness, all the components that we need for it, and why we care about it. So let's go ahead and take a look at that real quick. Okay, so before we can get to the idea of functional completeness and what it entails, we need to look at two different types of forms our Boolean expressions can take. First one being disjunctive normal form, which is going to be a sum of product of literals, and essentially we have some format of c1 plus c2 plus so on and so forth until cm where each c of j or elements of j through one through m is a product of literals so each of these c's that you see each of these product of literals is what we call a term an example here would be negated x times y times negated z that's going to be a term plus x times y, another term, plus again w is another term, plus y times again z times w, another term. So this expression, sum of four terms, each term is a product of literals, complements are applied only to individual literals. So we notice that x, z, w, and z here are all negated. They have complements over them. However, you don't have anything like this, for example, and no addition operations are applied within terms. So you didn't have anything they like x plus y inside this term here. It's just x times y. So this is a proper disjunctive normal form expression. About it. So next one is the conjunctive normal form, and it's kind of the opposite of disjunctive normal form, where we have sums of literals. So conjunction normal form is going to be d1 plus d2 plus d3, so on and so forth, for each element of j1 through m, where it's all sums of literals, and each of these is called a clause. Instead of terms, we have clauses, and instead of products of literals, we now have sums of literals. So an example would be this, negated x plus y plus negated z times x plus negated y, times w times y plus negated z plus w so again we have four clauses here each one is a sum of literals complements are applied only to individual literals we don't have anything like say x plus y entire thing negated nothing like that is occurring and there's no multiplication within the clauses itself this is an example of conjunctive normal form and we looked at disjunctive normal form just a moment ago so these two forms are going to be pretty synonymous to the idea of functional completeness because any Boolean expression can be expressed through either disjunctive normal form or conjunctive normal form. So, I actually talk about functional completeness. It's essentially going to be a set of operations. Any function can be expressed using only the operations from that set, then we can consider it functionally complete. So the set addition multiplication and complement are function complete because any Boolean expression can be displayed in disjunctive or conjunctive normal form because those forms use addition, multiplication, complement. So we know that all Boolean expressions can be put into disjunctive normal form or conjunctive normal form and we know that any of them can be expressed via addition, multiplication, and complement Therefore, that set is considered function complete. So we care about function completeness because we don't want to have some expression that we cannot make via our current set of operations, because then we'd have some as pitfalls who want to add more complexity to our system. So let's ask a question. Is it possible that only one type of operation is sufficient to compute any Boolean function. In other words, is it possible for a single Boolean operation to be functionally complete by itself? Everything we've looked at so far, which is addition, multiplication, complement, none of these are functionally complete. However, we can utilize some Boolean trickery and some different variations of logic to create new operations or to essentially take 
other existing operations and see how they might be function complete. So, two come to mind, that being NAND and NOR. So, all of the previous operations we've looked at so far, they've all been single step operations. And we know that none of them by themselves are function complete. So let's take a look at NAND and NOR. These are two step operations. More on that in a bit, but since they contain two of the aforementioned Boolean operations, we can use the Boolean trickery we talked about just a moment ago to yield the third and final one, and that would create a function complete system using just NAND or NOR. The NAND here is denoted by an up arrow, plus two elements from zero to one, again this is the Boolean alphabet, is essentially multiplication followed by a negation, called NOT AND or negated AND. And so we have zero NAND zero is one. Same thing as zero and zero equals zero. Negate that, we get one. And same thing here, zero times one. Negated is one, one times zero, negated. One, and then one times one, negated, zero. So essentially just multiplication followed by negation. That's what I mean by a two-step operation, essentially. Then here we have NOR which is a down arrow, and again, two elements of zero and one, and so going to be addition followed by negation, also known as not or, or negated or. Zero nor zero, one, zero one, zero nor one is zero, one nor zero is zero, and one nor one is also zero. The so exact opposite of regular or. Not too big of a deal. Now, this is essentially the last slide, but this is probably the most important part. So we've learned what we need for functional completeness, which is a set of at least addition, multiplication, and complement. We know that by themselves, none of them are function complete. We looked at two new operations, being NAND, whoops, that's supposed to be NOR, my bad, NAND and NOR. Those by themselves actually are function complete. It may not look like it on the surface, because, well, we need multiplication, addition, Negation, All right? Well, if we do NAND, well, we've got multiplication, we've got complement, we don't have addition. And if we do NOR, well, now we have addition and negation, but we don't have multiplication. What's going on? If you recall, we have De Morgan's Law. Two expressions can be multiplied using only addition and complement by applying De Morgan's Law. If you look here, X times Y, is the same thing as the negation of negated x plus negated y. So we can use that Boolean trickery in the form of De Morgan's Law, along with these new operations of NAND and NOR, to express the fact that they are function complete by themselves. Let's take a look at that. What if, I don't know, we want to take x plus y. We want to create multiplication from it. Well, let's try negating our inputs first. Negate x plus negated y. Apply to Morgan's Law. Well, we apply a negation operation to the individual elements. So that gives us x and y, and then we change addition to multiplication. All of a sudden, we have x times y. We know we can do complement from NAND and NOR. We can do addition from NOR. So here we can say, oh, like, well, we have access to NOR because we have complement and we have addition. Then we apply to Morgan's Law and all of a sudden now we have access to multiplication. Now we have access to complement, addition, and multiplication just through a simple NOR gate. Okay, well, how is NAND? Well, same exact thing. 
let's just do x times y, negate the inputs, apply to Morgan's law, we get positive x, positive y. Well, not complemented. Essentially, we just have regular x plus regular y. All of a sudden, now we have complement. That checks out. Multiplication checks out. And now we have addition, so that checks out. So both NAND and NOR by themselves in regards of having two operations available to them at all times and using De Morgan's law to transform those operations into a new operation, we now have function complete systems. So what does this mean? Well, I'm not going to get to the specifics of that for this video. I will get to more applied aspects in the next video that's going to be followed to this one. But essentially, if we have a function complete system by, say, just a NAND gate, for example, well, we can take one NAND gate and make anything from that. You can string a bunch of NANDs together, use some Boolean transformations and laws to create maybe some AND gates, some NOT gates. Use that to create OR gates. Use that to create XNOR gates. A lot of different things that we can make using just a simple NAND gate because we know that NAND by itself can be function complete. This is a function complete system. We can place anything that we make in disjunctive normal form or conjunctive normal form. So we have basically access to whatever we want from a very, very simple logic gate in the form of NAND or NOR. So hopefully that makes sense. Hope you learned something. And I'll see you in the next video which will basically be just a direct continuation of this one. So I'll see you then.